Hello, my name is Sam Feltham and welcome to Expert Interviews here on Smash the Fat. Uh, with me today is elite sportsman and arguably the best cricketer in the world, Shane Watson. How are you going, Shane? Good, Sam. Thanks for having me, mate. It's nice to be here. No worries, no worries. It's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. Um, so, uh, I wanted to get you on our show uh, because I came across you, I mean, not only um, from your cricketing career, but also from your um, your part in the Serial Killers movie from Donna O'Neill, who we interviewed probably about a few, few months back now. Um, because you yourself have had a journey uh, on a low carb, high fat diet to better health. Um, and so, sort of before we get into all of the nitty gritty about your your health journey on that, um, I'd like to find out sort of how did you actually get from you know playing cricket in Queensland to where you are today? Um. Well, first of all, I know I've been very lucky to have um, the opportunities I've had since I was um, oh, throughout my whole um, career, career really. Um, I've always, since I was a young kid, I've always absolutely loved, loved cricket, loved playing it. I really got that passion for the game of cricket from my dad, so it's just something that I've always loved doing, so I've just done whatever I possibly could to how to get the best out of myself, and that's really, like, when I was down to 16, I... Um, really just put my mind to think that no matter what I'm going to do everything I can to be as good as I can whether that's a grade cricketer um, whatever whatever level it is I'm just going to do whatever I can and I've, I've always found it very easy because I love what I do I, I love playing I love being able to continue to try and um, get the best out of myself and continue to improve so um, it's been a, a nice journey from starting playing professionally when I was 19 for um, moving away from Queensland to play for Tasmania and now um, playing, I've played quite a few games for Australia and playing all different um, competitions around the world. So uh, I certainly know I'm a very lucky guy to be able to um, follow my dream and continue to love every minute of it. That's awesome, mate. That's awesome. Um, and then about 14, 15 months ago, um, you decided to take on a low-carb, high-fat diet at the advice of the uh, Cricket Australia team um, doctor, Dr. Peter Bruckner, who, again, we've interviewed on this show, and he's actually an ambassador for, for Smash the Fat. Um, and uh, why, why did you decide to go down that line? Well, initially it was... Um it was more so seeing the transformation in um, in Doc Bruckner's um, himself. Um, I had a tour with him probably six months prior, um, and he'd you know, I think he'd lost about eleven or twelve kilo kilograms, mm. looked really healthy. So I was very um, inquisitive about what he'd what he'd done, and then he started talking to me about um, about the the low carb, high fat way of eating. Um, and put me put me onto a, a book to read initially um, by Gary Torbs to sort of start to understand things a little bit. And um, but being able to have a doctor there to be able to um, fill the void in the I suppose what I was always taught was one as an athlete I have to carbo load. That's how I've, that's where I get all my energy from throughout the throughout a long day. Um, also, you can't eat fat. Because it clogs your arteries, um, you know, your cholesterol goes up, and then you know, you're going to kill over and die of a heart attack. Um, and that's what was always sort of bred into me since, oh gosh, even when I was at high school, learning um, about health and uh, physical education. That was also part of um, what was um, what I was being educated in. So it took me quite a while to get my head around it, um, and. Knowing that you know, Peter Bruckner had done all the testing, he'd really done a lot of research himself into it, and then also starting to read up a lot on um, on the concept of it, um, the positives and negatives to it, um, you know, I was sold immediately because um, I've always um, had a problem at certain times with um, with my weight, with trying to keep it at a certain level, especially when I've um, just been playing and not having a pre-season. I'd always think going to a game, I had to make sure that I was carbo-loading, so I have a big I don't know, pizza or pasta leading into a game. Some days I'm going to expend a lot of energy I'm, as I'm an all-rounder, so I can have 
um, a big role to play in a one-day game, for example, with both bat and ball. But there's also other days where I might not bowl and I don't bat, but what I wasn't expending that energy. Um, and so over a period of time, I just my skin folds would gradually go up, my weight would gradually go up, um, and it's always a constant battle to be able to try and keep in in and around a certain level, which I know was going to give myself the best chance of performing the best of the time. So, um, yeah, it's so. So after talking to Peter Bruckner, I, I started um, changing the way I, I was eating. It's certainly immediately the effect that I had was um, not being hungry. That was one thing that was always an issue for me. I always ate really big meals and I was always hungry um, because my body just obviously didn't process the carbohydrate that well. Um, my body wasn't getting really what it needed, so I just kept trying to keep it. Um, and as soon as I started going on the high fat, low carb way of eating, I started to not like not eat anywhere near as much as what I used to. Not because I was starving myself to try and lose weight. I was just eating when I was hungry. So that for me was you know the first part of you know, my journey in India. I started in India doing it, and um, and it's just been a continual um, progression from there. But it's certainly changed you know my life personally, let alone. Yeah, my yeah, you know, my family's life as well. My mum and my dad, especially. That's awesome, mate. That's awesome. Um, and uh, when when you were first starting out on the diet itself, um, did you sort of feel like you had any peer pressure at all? And especially being in India as well, there's there's plenty of rice and naan bread, right? So, uh, what was that like? Um, yeah, it was. A little bit challenging um, to be able to find, especially um, meals that had um, high high fat content uh, more than anything, especially when they've always, over here in India, there's always a lot of rice and, and naan bread that's always floating around. That's what you always sort of feel yourself, I've always filled myself up on. So um, it was certainly, it was a bit a bit challenging, but having um, Peter Bruckner there you know, every day in, day out certainly um, helped me out to be able to um, continue to try and to move in that direction. Um, and there's and there's certainly always peer group pressure there. Like it, not so much now because people in and around cricket circles are understand understanding um, this way of eating now. Whereas initially, when um, I started, and a few of the other guys started um, eating this way, it was very different to anything that would been um, that would been told. Um, you know, our nutritionist back home at Cricket Australia certainly was. Um, not exactly, because yeah, not exactly that happy about what we were doing because it was very different. Um, but I think also once people started to see the results, not just from me, but from and uh, Peter Bruckner, but it was also Mitchell Johnson who was doing it, David Warner, um, Usman Kawaja who did it as well, and the results that we got, um, even within the first couple of months, people, you, you had to you had to actually take a good look at what was going on because the results were incredible, um, and people will always say the first thing that. And the first thing that I said is, what about your heart? What about the cholesterol? All that sort of thing. And that's people's always very scared off about that. But once, you know, I'm able to now educate them and tell them to um, read certain things now um, that are that are there for everyone to be able to read. It makes it very clear that it's certainly not certainly not the case. Um, it's just been something that's been hidden from us for a long period of time. Um, mm -hmm. For for a lot of reasons, um, and yeah, you know, the food industry um, plays a huge part in that. Yeah, massively, massively, um, and because you're in sort of a um, a professional sportsman environment, uh, were you guys able to have blood tests and things like that? Is it is that what is that part of um, Dr. Bruckner's protocol and things, or or is it just sort of yeah, just skin no. fold tests and things? Well, skin fold and weight was just a, an immediate one, which is a very easy to do. Um, but the one thing that I I wanted to do was to make sure. Um, hey there, Sam. So can you repeat that? I just I, I just totally lost you there. <laughs> <laughs> the beauty of uh, technology beauty across, across absolutely. the world, right? The internet you're coming and, to us uh, live in and, yeah, so it's pretty yeah. incredible either way. Uh, but yeah, yeah, yeah sorry, go, go, go on that again in terms of... Uh, yeah, it, um, 
initially the easy the easiest way to to check it immediately is just weight and skin. Oh yeah, sorry, Jane, you go for it. Um. Yeah, the easy the easiest way was skin folds and um and wait and just initially to see the immediate results but one of the things that I wanted to do as, as soon as I had the opportunity was, was to get um, a blood test to be able to see what my cholesterol levels were at, um, my triglycerides, my HDLs and LDLs and so, to see how the way I was eating, how what an impact that was having on, on my blood blood test results. So over the last over the last fourteen to fifteen months I've had at least three blood tests just to be able to make sure that um, you know what I was reading and what uh, you know, all the information that I was getting was you know was continuing to be you know, exactly right um, because there's so many fads nowadays with um, you know so many different diets or shake diets and and mm-hmm. you know my I've seen it firsthand with my dad my dad's had a lot of problem losing weight um, for for 15 or 20 years and uh, I've seen it with him as well all the, the things that the doctors tried to get him to go on to be able to try and lose weight. All that sort of thing. So um, it was something that I was, um, you know, very, very open about, and I really wanted to be able to try and um, find the best way of being able to do it without moving in one direction. There was more chance of actually um, having a negative effect on my on my health. And um, once I once I got my first, my first blood test results back, it was like. I, it was like, geez, I can't believe I'm eating all this stuff that I absolutely love, and it tastes so good. And yeah. one, I'm 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 starting to lose weight. My body's burning fat um, uh, very easily. I'm not starving myself, and um, and also, I'm my actual blood test results are better than what they ha- have been. So it was amazing to be able to see those, um, get that feedback immediately, and you know, blood tests were a great. A great way to be able to do that. Yeah, absolutely, and it's uh, it's, it is, it's important to sort of make sure that your body is reacting to what the majority of people's bodies are reacting to this style of diet, because um, it, it may not be for everyone, uh, but it's certainly probably the most obvious place to start, um, because we do tend to have um, too much sugar and refined carbohydrates, which it obviously in turn affects our um, carbohydrate metabolism and um, making us secrete too much insulin and all that jazz. Um, and yep. you mentioned uh, your mum and your dad, and your dad specifically, yeah. I, I understand, has type 2 diabetes. Is, is that correct. correct? And he, he yep. started to follow a, a low-carb, high-fat diet, and he he's seen health benefits himself. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, my, it's It's been a big problem for my dad has been been able to um, try and lose weight and one of the things that has come on probably over the last uh, 10 years has been the, the diabetes and now he's got type 2 diabetes, had it, he's had it for about five years now, um, he's got to inject himself with insulin you know, a number of times every day um, and like majority of um, the older generation they can be stuck in their ways and um, you know, it makes it very difficult at times to be able to, for there to be change. Um, and it's, it was a slow sort of progression for dad to really, um, for my dad to understand that there was another way of being able to um, try and control his um, his diabetes um, now that he had it. And once you know, I gave him some information about it, then he started reading up on himself. He realised that um, the best way to be able to either um, try and eliminate diabetes or try and control your um, insulin levels and your sugar levels is by eating a low carb, um, high fat diet. Um, so he was he was disappointed initially because <laughs> all the information that he was told was um, you know to lose weight, to starve mm-hmm. yourself, to all this sort of stuff to try and get your um, to control your diabetes or um, and also um, try to eliminate it initially from getting type two diabetes. Um, and so once he started on it, his um, sugar levels have been much more controlled. Um, his doctors that he's gone to, um, the diabetes doctors that he's gone to, have been um, you know, blown away by how he's been able to maintain his sugar levels without um, increasing or um, or reducing his doses of, of insulin per day. So, you know, my dad's um, he's still got a little way to go to be able to get it, you know, to be able to um, continue to 
eat eat that way and have that lifestyle. Um, mm -hmm. I said, you know, the older generation, especially the ones I've been experienced, who find it difficult for change at times. But he's seen the results, and um, and my mum, my mum as well. She hasn't got diabetes, but she's seen the results and how much healthier she feels. She's lost a fair bit of weight as well. So, um, um, yeah, it's been it's been incredible to be able to see how you know they've changed. It's just a shame that this information was out there in the public domain, I suppose. It was very much hidden away, you know, twenty years ago and you know, I know my dad by everything I've read now, my dad wouldn't have got diabetes in the first place, which is you know, which is disappointing. I know my dad's disappointed mm. about that as well. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's it's really sad. But the the great thing about this um is that he can start to control his blood sugar levels a lot better through his diet than through the drugs. Um, yeah. And plus, the bonus is that you get to have eggs and bacon for breakfast every morning, so you, yes. know, you can't go wrong there, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, so yeah, yeah, it is. It's fantastic. And the great thing for, for everybody watching this, if you haven't um, tried or started a low-carb, high-fat diet, is that you can test it on yourself. You know, go to your doctor, get everything measured, ideally get get your weight and uh, waist measured and all that stuff, as well as uh, some blood tests. All you need is your cholesterol and glucose, just so that you got some level, um, some base level. Uh, and then, you know, do it for 12 weeks and then go back to your doctor in 12 weeks' time, get it all tested again and see if it makes a difference. You know, just do, t just do 12 weeks. If you get healthier, then it means that you should probably be continuing to do that, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's, that's the logic. It can, it can become more difficult in normal life with sort of, yeah. you know, events and, and stuff like that. But if you if you see the results, then you start to believe in it more and you actually start to, like, do it more as well because you feel better as well. Um, yeah. So, yeah, it's pretty cool. Uh, and then, yeah, as we were talking about eggs and bacon, anyway, what did you have for breakfast this morning, Shane? <laughs> um, well, I had a I had an omelet, a big omelet with um, you know cheese and uh, tomato and onion, those sorts of things. Um, which you know, beforehand I'd have an omelet, probably having previously I'd have an egg white omelet because the yolk was really bad for my cholesterol. Um, <laughs> and I certainly wouldn't have cheese with it. <laughs> um, and you know, bacon can be quite hard to find here in. Um, um, India consistently, yeah, especially um, decent, decent bacon. So, um, you know, actually for for, brec uh, for breakfast, I have quite a bit of cheese at times and nuts and that to be able to film uh, to um, start the day as well as having a, a couple of omelets to if I'm bacon or sausages or mm -hmm. um, you know, certain other things to be able to. Um, uh, even yogurt, full fat yogurt, sometimes can be difficult to be able to find. So when I'm at home, it makes it very easy because I've got every kind of selection I could imagine, and it's incredible yeah. to be able to have breakfast. So it's, it's always been my favourite meal, but it certainly is like there is no question my favourite meal by a long way now, um, especially as especially when I'm home because the selection that I can have is like I only dreamed of being able to eat this. Um, eat the, these things that I've always loved, and then it just sustains me throughout the day, and then I'm really I'm just eating when, you know, just to chip away throughout the rest of the day, whereas previously I'd have breakfast, I'd have toast and cereal and fruit, and by mid-morning mid I'd be starving and hanging out for lunch, whereas now mm -hmm. it's not the case. I'm normally 2 or 3 o'clock in the afternoon, I'll have some, just a snack, or some nuts, some macadamia nuts or some um, prosciutto or some cheese or some yogurt. And it'll tie me over to till dinner, and man, my dinner's not as big of a meal either. So it's just it's changed it's changed my life now. I can actually I even save an hour a day at least by not having to go and worry about lunch, trying to find lunch because I don't really eat it because I'm not I'm not I'm not hungry. <laughs> That's incredible. That's incredible. <laughs> and then what, what one thing that I'm getting asked a lot. Um, sort of from from people in um, relation to this interview is that because you're an elite sportsman, professional sportsman, um, obviously you're going to be training probably five out of seven days at least, is it? Yeah. Um, and um, yeah. yeah, how does how does that work in terms of your training? Um, are you able mm -hmm. just to have breakfast and sort of train pretty much through the day, or, or what, what what does a training day look like for you, um, for food and for your training as well? Yeah, well, at, at this point in time, I actually, 
I haven't had a big training block. It's been because I've been playing nonstop since actually for the last 14 or 15 months. There hasn't really been a training block to be able to um, do that. But it's more so been learning about the ways that um, the energy that I need um, to be able to play games. Um, and even this time last year in the IPL that I'm playing at the moment, um, I didn't know exactly the way to be able to have energy um, you know, even through a game. Um, I thought I got to a stage in a, in a couple of games where I started to really feel like I needed some energy um, and then I'd resort to just have a little bit of carbohydrate um, to try and keep me to keep my, um, keep me going. Mm -hmm. um, so initially, I started during game time having a little bit of carbohydrate, even leading into leading into the game, mm -hmm. just because you know, I still was trying to find what was what would work for me. Um, whereas now, I I don't have any carbohydrate at all, um, as little as possible anyway. And during a game, wow. I've always made sure I've got macadamia nuts, I've got pecans, um, I've got nuts throughout the uh, throughout. Um, whether it's I'm about to go out to bat or in between um, an innings break, I'll have nuts there to be able to just make sure that just can, sustains my energy um, through the rest of the game. And I just I've got energy to burn. Even like last night I batted and bowled in there's like early 40s um, degrees in here in um, Wow. <laughs> and, and quite a bit of, and quite a bit of humidity as well. Is one of the hotter days I've had for for a while. Mm. And I had energy to burn throughout the whole day uh, and the whole game, and it was, it was three hours of, of high intense, high intensity um, playing. So, you know, previously I would, I definitely would have crashed and burned, um, you know, with carbohydrate loading. Mm. I would have got to a stage where I was really hungry during a game. Whereas this time mm. I just got things enough now, nuts and that, to be able to to get me through, get me through a game with absolutely mm. no problems, plenty of energy have no drop off in energy as well, which sometimes which I used to get with carbohydrate when I was eating a high carbohydrate um, diet. So mm. that just feels like you just got that much energy, just prolonged energy for you know, throughout a game without having to really worry about it. It's amazing. It's amazing. So uh, in terms of what yesterday, for example, looked like, um, you you ate breakfast and then is are the IPL games today in the evening? Or during the day? That evening, yeah, the eight, yeah, eight o'clock at night. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so my day yesterday, um, I had for breakfast. I had um, an omelette and I had some uh, uh, full fat yogurt um, for breakfast. Um, and then for like just before I left to go to the game, which is probably three o'clock in the afternoon, um, I had um, it's like a cottage cheese um, uh, ticker. So. Um, so I find, find I as a decent server that so I feel like that cottage cheese um, really does fill me up as well. gives me gives me energy, gives me the fat that I need, the fat that I need as well. And then going to the game, I had some macadamia nuts and that as well. Um, and then during the game, I had um, I had pecan nuts as well. Just during the game, when you know, I came off to in between the innings, and I. A hell of a lot of energy, and then when I got back from the game, I ate, ate some chicken tikka and that sort of thing. But and that was mm -hmm. heaps of energy to be able to get me through like a really hot day. And I, you know, I played, I bowled four overs, and I batted for probably half an hour as well. And also, I'm running around because I'm captain of the Rajasthan Rules as well. So I'm, it's pretty, it can get hectic during a game. Um, and I've I always feel like I've got now. I feel like I've got energy to burn. That's awesome. That's awesome, and then that must be so important for a captain as well to be able to have that energy to rile up your team and 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 sort of walk the walk as well, sort of show your teammates. Because of any of your teammates in the in the IPL, because obviously you got different nationalities yeah. there with different cultures and things like that. Has anybody on um, in the IPL sort of approach you and say, "I'd like to try to try it"? Absolutely. Um... It's it's amazing how quickly the, the word can spread, um, for even even from you know within a year. It's something that really you know the Australian cricket team started, and we you know, then we sort of um, spread the word even last year during the IPL to other people who sort of wanted to just get a bit more of an understanding of it. Um, and and this year as well, even seeing someone like Rahul Dravid, who um, is one of the greatest Test batsmen that's um, played the game of cricket, um, he's been uh, eating a low carb, um, high fat diet, especially for the last um, oh probably three months, and 
I think he said he lost something like seven kilos and he feels best better than he ever has. Um, Amazing. So, so he's you know he was always very interested about it, and because he's a you know he's a, he's a very intelligent guy, he was always interested in reading up on it. And uh, once he just put some structure in place to be able to do it, because you know it's it's different. Their culture is quite different, whereas where naan bread and, and rice and all those sort of things are just part of what you a part of what you eat. Mm -hmm. um, so it it took a little bit of just a little bit of time for him to be able to make sure that was okay back at home with his um, wife cooking and that sort of thing for his kids mm -hmm. and that is. As well, um, but and he's one that seen the benefits, um, and even something like we've got a New Zealand guy called Tim Southie, who's a fast bowler for New Zealand, who um, hasn't really been exposed to it, but after seeing well me talk about it, um, and and you can see that he's much more inquisitive about it. He started to eat that way just to see um, the benefits and how it affects his energy and and the you know, how he how he feels at the end of it. So. Yeah, everyone you can see is very inquisitive about it because one, it's so different to what we're always, what I've always been taught, and what all the cricketers have always been taught about health and um, performance and carbo loading and all that sort of thing. So people are very inquisitive about. Hang on, maybe there's another way to be able to get the best out of myself and um, and the other issues that come with eating high carbohydrate diet, um, especially in the the long term effects of it with. Um, Putting on weight, obesity, diabetes, um, late onset diabetes, and starting to understand that maybe there's a better way to be able to to be able to live your life. Absolutely, absolutely. Well said, Shane. Um, so uh, we're coming to the, to the end of our of our interview, and we we've got a few questions that have come in via via Facebook, Twitter, and and by email as well. So I'll, I'll start off with the ones via email. Um, this is this is from um, Olivia Hubbard at FitPro, which is like the world's largest uh, fitness professionals organization. Um, yeah. And um, they ask, um, in what way has the diet altered your game? So, oh, I wouldn't say it's altered my game, um, mm -hmm. really, at, at all, either, either way. Um, I just think it, oh, well, I know it's altered my life. I always thought because of the issues that I had with trying to keep my weight down, I always thought as soon as I finished playing cricket, I'm going to I'm gonna blow out, I'm going to put on weight, I'm going to have to be really, um, I'm going to have to exercise a lot because I just know even when I've, when I've been playing that it's been hard to be able to keep my weight down. Um, so as simple as knowing now that I just I love the way I eat, I love the food that I'm eating now and I just and I continue to eat that way, I'm not going to have a problem at all with that, um, and that even, but for that me, for me personally, that's a, a big weight that's lifted off my shoulders because I was always very worried about what's going to happen when I finish because you know, I know, um, mm. you know, my genetics as well with my mum and dad, how they've sort of moved into a, um, into a certain direction as well. So, so um, you know, I was always worried about that. So from a cricket perspective, I just feel now I've got much more energy. I'm not, I'm not waiting for lunch during a test match and going, geez, I need to eat. Uh, at lunch, I just I, I don't eat a big meal any uh, now anyway, um, because I've, I've set it up from for a, a really good breakfast. So, you know, it's certainly not I'm not hanging out for meals during a game, um, and energy compared to certainly compared to what I was. So, it's probably as simple as that. More so than you know affecting my my performance either you know positive or negative. I've, I haven't really had too many injuries. Which has been one of my issues as well through this period. Um, so yeah, I'm sure it's not just coincidence as well. Absolutely, absolutely. And that's a, that's a really interesting point, actually, Shane. Um, is about sort of when you go into retirement from your professional sports career, because um, a, a lot of sportsmen tend to uh, pile on the pounds mm -hmm. <laughs> after after they finish their yeah. their professional sports career. Um, and um, as seen in the serial killers movie, um, Donald's dad, who was a, a professional sportsman as well, ended up having a heart attack later on in life, despite not drinking alcohol, eating heart healthy whole grains, and all this jazz. Um, but yet he still um, had a, had a heart attack. So um, yeah, it's, it's sort of good for you that um, you're going to be able to sort of. Potentially, at least, um, 
more likely avoid that that kind of fate as well, which yeah. is which is absolutely fantastic. And I suppose it's yeah. kind of it's kind of important for sports for sports people to understand that as well. Um, mm. Is that they need to be careful, like post their professional sports career as well. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, yeah, maybe, yeah, maybe maybe it's something to think about when you when you retire eventually. Maybe, is, yeah. to, is to go into look, looking after uh, professional sportsmen um, after after they finish their careers. But uh, well, exactly. Well at, well, at this point in time, if we continue, I'm um, certainly spreading the word. Then um, with the yeah, the cricket fraternity, especially, hopefully, majority of people will be sort of moving in this direction, so they won't have to worry like you know like the state that I'm at at the moment. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, and then moving on to the next one, which is kind of related, uh, with from uh, Rob Robbie Debenham uh, on Facebook asks, has it um, decreased your explosive power, perhaps in your bowling at all? And I know that you said that it hasn't really affected your performance either way, but have you felt a decrease in your explosive power, or can you still sl sling some uh, some nine mile an hour balls? Yeah, no, my power has not in, um, decreased whatsoever. Um, like normally through a period of time where I'm playing a lot, I actually my, my muscle bulk because I'm not training and continue to keep my, my gym work up when I'm playing non-stop. My, I feel like my muscle bulk, my power does de decrease a bit. I can just you know, feel, I know it in my muscles, in my, in my arms, in my legs. Um, whereas because also it's not a high-protein diet, but because I'm eating a, a quite a lot of protein anyway and how my body's um, processing the fat, I, I feel like I'm certainly still as powerful um, as what I was when the last time I had a break to be able to train um, and really get into a, a training block, which I haven't had for you know, 15, 16 months. So, um, so for me to be able to maintain that strength, um, doing many weight or gym sessions at all, um, shows it's a, uh, that it's certainly working, that my body's really agreeing with the energy and, and what I'm putting into it. Um, and the other person who's um, who's a big testament to this is Mitchell Johnson, who um, he, he sees, um, he's been on the um, low-carb, um, high-fat diet since the same time as well. And um, goodness me, he's been able to maintain his power. He's bowled 150 kilometres consistently for the last 12 months. Um, and without without really well without an injury, and um, and has been able to sustain it through catch when he's had to bowl a lot of overs as well. So and you can see him now. Normally, when he'd bowl and play for a long period of time, his muscle bulk would definitely just fade away um, because he needed to get you know needed to keep his training up um, when he was, mm. which is impossible when you're playing all the time. Whereas Mitch Johnson now he. You see him now compared to where he was 10, 12 months. He's still the exact same strength, and exact same size. So, um, you know, it's certainly it works for his body type and for his body as well. So, you know, he's another one who you know, I've seen it with my own eyes how he's been able to sustain his power as well. That's awesome. That's awesome. Uh, and then Larry Diamond on Facebook again uh, asks, uh, have you had fewer illnesses um, du during the year? Uh, well, I certainly don't get as many colds as what I as what I used to. Um, but I'm always very, as, I always look after myself as well as I possibly can because you know I can't really afford to be able to be too consistently. Otherwise, I, you know I can't do what I love doing. So um, I'm always really particular about trying to look after myself. If I feel like I'm getting on a cold. I, I, you know, take vitamins and do what I have to do to try and stay stay on top of it. But you know, I definitely I haven't had any like traveling around the subcontinent especially which is um, the food can be you know, it, well I not always agree with um, especially Australians um, uh, stomach type so um, but I but I haven't had any you know I haven't had any um, yeah no um, um, food bugs or anything like that since I've you know since I've been eating this way as well so um, I suppose until yeah, I just haven't really thought about it, to be totally honest, and I haven't been sick really at all. And I've spent over the last twelve months, um, I think I've spent about, my goodness, that was probably, well, the last fourteen months I've spent about ten months actually, it might be eight months here in India, um, and around the subcontinent. I haven't, I haven't missed a game because I've been sick, so it must be doing something right. 
Yeah, absolutely, because it's, it's it's another point as to why a low-carb, high-fat diet would be good for you and why going on a low-fat diet might not necessarily be a good idea is because the immune system runs on fat, right? So exactly. um, if you go on a low-fat diet, you are starving your immune system from what it actually yeah. needs to rebuild itself, which is another yeah. crazy um, conundrum as to why we got into yeah. the low-fat thing in the first place. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> yeah. well, it's, it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you, Shane, um, and I really, really appreciate your time. People can um, check out your website at shanewatson.com.au, uh, then they can follow you on Twitter at shanerwatson33, uh, and then there are multiple uh, Facebook fan pages as well that people can check out for all the latest Shane Watson news um, and then just finally from, from you Shane do you have any sort of uh, passing words of wisdom for anyone that might want to try a low carb high fat diet or any sports people out there that might be a little bit sceptical about the results yeah I think the most important thing is to be able to um, just educate yourself to start with um, read, read some literature, read, read the information that's out there at the moment because once you start um, diving into it and realise that there's so many benefits to whether it's just health in general or as, a, as an athlete, um, you got to get out of you know, yourself and what, you, what your body is. So um, yeah, and, and then getting blood tests to be able to continue to reconfirm that as well is very important just in your own mind. So, um, but like Thanks to you, Sam, for continuing to get the word out as well. Because I said this has changed, this has significantly changed my life. Um, something that was very unexpected, but it's it's made it such a huge difference in my life and how I um, how I see my health as well. And um, yeah, it's it's exciting um, exciting thing that the word's really spreading very quickly now as well. So um, I'm seeing it in my you know, my own cricket circles how quickly it's being spread. So um, thank you for continuing to get to the word. Aaron, there's no doubt that the that society is certainly going to benefit um, in a long way, and the health system, I think, in the future is going to benefit from it as well. So um, there's so many positives to it. Absolutely, thank you so much, Shane. Really, really, really appreciate that. And uh, there's only one more thing to do, and that's to have a smash it out from Shane Watson. So on three, we're gonna we're gonna shout, smash it out. So yeah. one, two, three, <laughs> smash it out. Smash it out. <laughs> Yeah, there you go, Shane. That's brilliant, mate. <laughs> right, well, thank you again so much, Shane. Um, if you want to check out any of Shane's stuff, make sure that you look in the links below or dotted around here if you're on YouTube. Uh, and then until next time, guys, be well and, of course, smash it out. Thanks, Shane. See you, mate. Pleasure.